is Coogan Cassius for Eiffel TV in association with Macklin's Gym Marbella. With me I've got Kevin Mitchell. Thanks. Well, Kev, I, I've, I thought for a few minutes when I spoke to you earlier on that you were actually joking about what you said to me. But yeah, I always joke about it, yeah. You're always uh, messing about and, and, and laughing about things, but uh, it's quite sensationally uh, you've decided to retire from boxing. Yep. Um, first of all, why have you come to this decision? I suppose, it's, I think when your time's up, your time's up and you know it. It's like, the interest of me fighting now, I've lost my interest in training, running, dieting. I suppose after the Lava's fight, even training for the Bosso fight, I just weren't, you know, I weren't in it. I suppose I just couldn't bother to train. As I was in the gym Friday with Tony, I was on the bag, and I finished the, I did like 15 minutes solid on the bag, 15 minutes on the pad solid, so I'd do 15 minute rounds. I was on the bag and I went and joined the bag, and I was thinking to myself, this ain't normal, and I was on the pads and not enjoying the pads, and I could tell Tony could tell. So I was just thinking, should I say something? Should I, say something? Should I, should I like, mention it to Tony? And then I thought about it over the weekend, I said to my mum, I just don't fancy it no more, mum. And he said, well, you do what you think that's why she went, but you should go and chat with Tony and see what he thinks. I'd chat with Tony, and he said to me, I could tell you've not enjoyed it since the fight before, I said, so, but like, he said, I've let you, let you decide. But I think t Tony seemed to be pleased that basically I've chatted to him about it and have a good chat about it and what I'm going to do now, so it's good. Obviously, after the Lunares fight, mm -hmm. which was quite a difficult to think for you because of the way it ended and the fact that how much you were in the fight and how close you were to sort of winning that world title that you've obviously craved throughout your career. But yep. after that, I remember coming to speak to you a few days later and your attitude was, look, you know, you just want to get back in the ring, you want to yeah. get back training and, you know, you want to sort of forget about that as quickly as you can. Okay, but yeah. did you have any thoughts back then after the Norris fight that, what you're feeling now, basically? No, I suppose I didn't, but I suppose in time I was getting back in the training, I just did, I said, yeah, again, dieting, running. I just wasn't enjoying it again no more. I just I stopped enjoying it. I suppose just in my mind I had the right things I wanted to do and how I wanted it to be and get back and win the world title again. I suppose once it dies out, I suppose it just dies out. It's been the first time in my life I've ever felt like this in boxing. So, yeah, it's just where it's led me, isn't it? Obviously the last time I spoke to you, um, there was obviously a proposed fight for you uh, on the 18th of March in Finland, uh, yep. Helsinki against uh, Edith Tatley. So, again, going back to that, Yep. When you were deciding to sort of to take, take fight. that fight, where were you with your thoughts that you're having now? I was thinking then, well, basically, get the European title fight, win that, and perhaps a world title fight could come off the back of that. Like, it's my dream as a kid to be a world champion. It was always my dream. Obviously, the dream was never happening there, but part and parcel of my feelings before I was thinking, yeah, get that fight, win that fight, and then get, might be able to get a world title shot off the back of that. But then, really, I was in the gym, I was not been enjoying it, losing no weight. Just, uh, just be fair. I've been at it 21, nearly 22 years, boxing as a fighter. And this, at this day now, I suppose, it's just a new chapter for me in my life. Obviously, um, your first defeat as a professional uh, was to Michael Katsidis. Yeah. Uh, that so famous night at Upton Park, yeah, but because right. of the sheer amount of crowd that you had there, over 30,000 people, yeah. uh, it wasn't for the full world title, it was for the interim Inchim, title, yeah. but it was a big night at um, massive, night. Ma massive night at Upton Park and I remember like I said I've, I spoke to you after that we wasn't actually doing IFL then, but I remember speaking to you and mm -hmm. you had that feeling that you'd let all those fans down that had yeah, come to see you yeah that's the same feeling it's the same thing I feel now for being retiring as a fire but as a kid I say that I said as a kid I remember mentioning it to young Connor Ben when I see his dad fight fights at the end when he was in the end of his career and he was getting beat by fires I knew he could have destroyed it used to work it's like, I used to hate he used to work me as a, as a fan so then I look back and I think about things now myself as like, I don't want to fight young kids watching me on TV and thinking and watching me get beat and thinking they're gut they're gutted to see me get beat. I think top of the timing now the timing at the right time, you know. I think um, for the fans. And that's why it was a big decision for me, because my fans, I know my fans love me the way I and why I fight. But I think for me, the fans would be happy that I've retired, I don't think they'd want to see me get out they keep getting beat over and over again sort of thing. Yeah, so that night when I let the West Hills at West Ham, I thought I let them all down, but I think, nah, I think we're doing them proud. Your first attempt at the full world title uh, was in 
in Scotland yep. against uh, your friend Ricky Ricardo, Bones. Yep, Ricky, yep. And uh, again, that was a, a very disappointing night for you. Um, like I said, at the time, it pitched as you know the two best lightweights in the country. Yeah. Uh, you and Ricky, and uh, it wasn't to be your night that night either. Well, it's definitely not that night. It was I never forget? It. I can remember being in Joshua. I had a long delay off before that fight, and then um, coming back, which I've done this before, so there weren't no big deals with it. Knowing what Ricky's like now, I'd completely off my head to think that I'd been out to live with him back then. He's like he trained like a lunatic. So back then. I was a party boy. Most of my career, I was a party boy. You know what I mean? Only last two years, I've been with Tony that I've, I've stopped being a party boy. But um, back then, I really thought I had a good chance of winning. But looking, what you've been with Ricky the last two, last year or so, two years, and I've been training with Ricky, completely off my mind. I think I've been out living with someone like Ricky, the way he trains and how he lives. He's a tough man. And back then, I was half a party boy, as I said. But yeah, it was. This iron for me because in my heart, in my in my in my heart in my heart I fancied I could have won and could have beat him. God boy was I wrong. Another night, another one back to dust. I finished the game or not? You were professional for 13 years. About 13 years. Yeah, yeah. made your prof uh, professional debut uh, yeah. um, in Dagenham at the Gorsbrook Leisure Centre. Yep. And Steve Quinn. And you got Ko Win. Ko Win. Yep. Stephen Quinn. The only reason I won by Kyle that night was because Steve broke his leg in about three places when I dropped him, so it weren't because I dropped him. So I thought, ah, oh, he's knocked him out. Great. No, Steve broke his leg. But I mean, 13 years is, uh, like I said, a long time. Yeah. Uh, your professional career, uh, as well as your amateur career before that. Yeah. But unfortunately, I mean, for yourself, like I said, you, you sort of, I spoke to you about this the other day um, at the Wayne, and you sort of, you join a list of very, very talented fighters that this country has seen that didn't quite win, title, win, yeah. win a world title. So will that be a regret of yours? Um, Massively. It was, a, it was a childhood dream. Boy, 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 I was dreaming. When you're a kid and you're like, you look at all your eyes and be more champion. I used to want that. And it, but that drove me all the way through my career and it's helped me, it's helped fighters follow me in my footsteps and, and that be, being who I am. So it's, in a sense, it would be a massive let, like, it'll get, it's killed me I've never won it, but on the same sense, I've followed the footsteps that a lot of champions has done and didn't win a world title. Like so El Graham, another great fighter, didn't win a world title. And, and kids follow me, and you'll have kids follow more fighters over the years, like Anthony Joshua, fighters like that. It's just a part and parcel of the sport. Some win, some don't. You can't, you can't, I want to say, beat yourself up because you didn't win it. I mean, domestically, uh, you won it all. Um, yep. But. Looking back on that now, obviously, mm -hmm. will you be satisfied in 10 years' time with what you achieved in your career? I'll be happy I stayed normal, I stayed living. I'll be happy that I've, most definitely happy that where I, where I am with my people, my fans. I, not many people like the way I, they just love the way I am because I am normal, I'm down to earth, I have my laughs, so I have my giggles, me and you have so many giggles. If I go over West Ham, I drink in a bowling pub, I'm always with everybody else, I just keep myself normal. If I, if I go out, I go out with my friends, I've stayed local to all my friends. We're all a bit crazy, but that's what they are, me mates, and I've stayed. I've just, yeah, I'm happy the way I've been. You know, I'm happy where I've ended up with Tony. I'm happy that I end up with Matchroom. They're, they're the best, it's the best team I've had in my whole life. So, yeah, I'm happy the way it's all gone. But. Obviously, for, you know, throughout your career, you sort of, you spent the majority of your career um, under Frank Warren. Yep. And obviously the, the latter part of your career with Matthew Menedy Hearn. Yep. But I mean, I don't want to put sort of a negative spin on this, but no, no, they, no. you know, both promoters obviously contributed to your career. Oh, definitely, and, yeah. You know, um, in getting well title shots, yeah, well title opportunities. Frank was good to me early in my career and that, and it all went well. It's like, it's like, but then, it's just my life and life with the fighters. It's just, it's all, it's all, they all had some sort of influence on me and helping me in, in my career. I mean, we had bad and good times with Frank. There's I mean, bad times with Frank, but that's just, that's just life in it. I don't, there's no bad in that. It's just the job we're in, it's the fight game. You said, I mean, throughout sort of over the last sort of four or five years in interviews that certain parts of your life that you didn't live as a fighter, you didn't, mm. you know. Um, you were always obviously when you're in the gym, you're dedicated as yeah. as anyone. But outside of the ring, there were aspects of your life that you weren't living right as a fighter. Um, is that did that contribute to possibly how your career is? Or was? yeah, most, most definitely. 
as I talk to fighters now, this is why I'm, I'm going to enjoy doing what I do now, is, 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 like, giving kids fighters, giving them insights to things that they think going out partying with the birds and all that crap, it's all of rubbish, and, but they don't understand that unless they speak to fighters like me, that's been and done it, and basically lost the world title because of it, basically. But that's, that's things I can always, always help out with other fighters in the future. But most definitely, back when I was younger, always out on the weekends, partying, going on holidays, partying. But training and partying doesn't work, it doesn't go together. Girls, all that sort of stuff, it's all rubbish. It's, all, it's, all, it's no good for a fighter's life. But I've done it, a bit of a crazy time, but yeah. Something I can help kids out with in the future, if you know what I mean. I can laugh about it now because I've done it, but... I can help kids out with, they think it's all out of, because what it is, when you're a fighter, you get a lot of attraction, you want to chase, you start chasing the parties and that, it's all rubbish, you want to be a fighter, mate, you've got to live like an athlete, you've got to live like AJ, all them sort of fighters, you've got to live like them. Um, talk about your career highlights, obviously one fight that really sort of stood out for me was uh, your fight with uh, John Murray. Yeah, it's a good um, fight, yeah. It was a great fight, and it was a, a, a like I said, one of your best nights as a, a professional. Yeah. But what would you say was sort of the highlight of your 13 year professional career? I said my best fight. I think the highlight was I said I, I said I beat the, I boxed the best player of pan in the weight division at the time. Well, I know I was that night there. I was I was beating the champion of the world only because of any clashes, but I was cut and I was stopped. That was probably my best night in my career. I'd say the most enjoyable fight I've ever had was when I fought Daniel Strider. Good job on him. Um, there's been a few like that. I, never, I don't think I was fighting um, at Wembley in front, of, in front of the big crowd there but on the car watching George Groves on the card. Yeah. And I was getting beat. I remember sitting back down after seven rounds. Well, our game plan was half eight rounds. We step on the gas and knock this kid out late. Well, I sat down after seven rounds and Tony goes, right, right now, Kev, you two rounds down. We, we need to get you back when you step on it. I went, Tony, he's just done with a body shot. I can hardly breathe. And he went, all right, do what you have to do. <laughs> But it's like, I've had lots of good memories over the years. I mean, I remember fighting Cole Jennison yeah. and walking onto a rubber cut in the sixth round off of him. And, it, it, and you watch the fight, it looks like nothing. He knocked me out of my feet. And I ended up coming back, and I remember the bell going, and then I'm walking back to the corner without right, 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 controlling my legs. I had some good memories. Prescott was a good night. But it was like, even get nice to have been beat, don't get me wrong, I've been beat, but <clears throat> the big shows like West Ham, massive. So, yeah, like, Mega league people. I remember. I remember Chelsea Football Club was it was in the cup final that night. They won. That was in, that was they was at Wembley. I think it was. I remember one of the players won me up. I was in the dressing room. See, we were all cucking in, we were singing in the background, and we were all coming down to um, we were all coming down after to the fight. So basically, that was in the final, Chelsea at the time, and then I was driving down from yeah. So man, I've met. I've had some good times in the but in boxing's done good for me over the years. But I mean, the the four defeats you suffered as a professional. Yeah. Uh, to Katsidis Burns, uh, Barossa <coughs> and the Norris. I mean, you know, they're four of the best fighters that have that have fought in the weight. Um, yeah. So there's there's absolutely no shame in that, if you like. No, no Disappointing definitely. nights for you, obviously, yeah. but... <coughs> no shame, you get yeah. beat. You never saw it. There's always, you're not on the right, on the right night and you're never a good fighter, you're going to get beat. It's part and parcel of the game. If you're not... <coughs> there's fighters out there that's, that retire unbeaten. And, and that's great, but as far as that, have lost loads and have beaten loads. It's just part and parcel of the game. You win some, you lose some. As my mum always says, there's always someone bigger and better around the corner they give you a slap. What do you think would have happened in, say hypothetically, in the next sort of six to eight months if you'd obviously taken this fight with Tatley on the 18th of March, uh, say you'd beaten him, would it have obviously these feelings that you're having, you probably still would have had them because you're, you're winning. Yeah. You sort of have a different, you probably might have had a different mindset, but yeah. how would you see your sort of career of going if you hadn't decided to retire right now? You know, if I could have gone out there one, perhaps further down the line, got a shot for a title, could have fought for Crowder, you never know. Fights like that could have happened, but it's just hypothetical, isn't it? Like saying, if I was WBC World Champion, how many fights would I have had after that? You never know, I might have not even had one after that, I might have had a couple after that. Depending, it's all dependent, it's all like it's all ifs. You've been with a few trainers throughout yep. your career. Yep. Um, Johnny Ems. Yep. Baba Tundi. Paul Cook. Yep. Jimmy Tibbs. Tony Sims. Who would you say had the most influence on your career? Or is that difficult to answer? No, it's not difficult to answer. The most influence on my career, in my life, 
of looking after my life and why I'm keeping me safe. I'd say Tony Sims of that felt. I met Tony Sims, I'll never forget it, when I was 15. A guy called Frankie Sims was basically a good they're friend of mine. I know very well. He's like my uncle Frankie, he's a good man to me. He, he looked after me as a kid and basically um, he introduced me to Tony. I was only I was, I think I was 15. Give it if the junior ABAs. So anyway, I was introduced me to Tony. It was in Bucker still in, in, in Tony's shop or a nightclub that Tony owned back then, a little bar or a restaurant. I remember, I remember it being dark and there was a dark room. I remember Tony Burns sitting there and Tony Sims sitting there on the right. And then from then, I was obviously a cheeky 15 year old. No difference. And then, um, yeah, and ever since then, I went Tony split split part when I was 18, so I went with Frank promoting me. And Tony didn't want me being with that promoter, wanted me with a different promotion team. And he said, Kevin, well, if you go with Frank, I can't work with you. So then, basically, me being a young kid, I thought I'd go my own way. And years later, it's left me back with Tony again. But I'm, I'm, I said to Tony, like, I believe that life takes down certain roads for certain reasons. And it's led me back to Tony again, do you know what I mean? And I've had two good years with Tony again now, and he made me enjoy the sport, he's made me back safe, financially safe, and looking after myself. And and basically, I'm, my next chapter in life is going to be back with Tony, so that's good. Obviously, comes on to the next question. Um, yep. <clears throat> being retired from the sport now, yep. what is next for Kevin Mitchell? I'm going to become a super cool. No. I'm going to be back in. Um, <laughs> You could pull that off. You and Paige, you could do a double act. I mean, but we've done it a few times. <coughs> Sorry. In the uh, snow over a park. Yeah, I bet you have. I bet you have. <laughs> um, no, um, I think I'll be back now. I'm be Tony, the last two years, he plants seeds in you. Tony, he, he, he does things. He keeps just keeps me safe. He keeps me. He's always been a bit. Like, he's like a father to me in a way. Tony, he's always been there. Like, when I was 15, as I got older, we done my car licenses. Done all things. He's always looked after me. Always when I was a kid. And the same as I've been as I've been an adult now and I've seen him, he's always been looked after me now. And he planted a seed in here basically with Kev, look after the gym this week, I'm going on holiday, train so and so, I need to do this, I need to do that. So find out I'm training fighters. Same I didn't expect, I never want I never thought I'd ever want to do, train fighters. And over the last two years I've been doing it and I've like last last year I've been doing quite a lot of training the fighters and helping them do bits and bobs and that. And I've just quite enjoyed it. In the last six months, he's, he's got, got into me and said to me, well, how about when you think about retiring one day, you become a trainer on me. Then we can take on more fighters and then eventually that he'll pack up and then I'll take on from him. But what, what, you can't beat a better mentor than him, man. He's, what he's done. So being with him is brilliant. I mean, it's a, it's a good thing to hear because obviously you've, like I said, as well as being a professional for 13 mm -hmm. years and all your amateur experience, you know, that needs to be passed on in some way yeah. um, through, you know, through the good times and the bad times you have yeah. in advice to, to the fighters up and coming so boxers. Give, yeah. give kids advice that they're out partying and they can't be in clubs around London and Essex and not, not, not me know about it, so if I know they're all messing around, I'll get them banned from the club. But, um, yeah, it's, I can give insights to people, even like AJ, I can chat to people, fighters that they're having hard times in the gym and having days they don't feel like being in there and they find it hard. I can have chats with people because I know I've been there and done it. I've had them hard days where things like. So even like, it's, it's good I can give insight to people. An insight that they haven't had yet. Uh, they're, they're experiencing going in clubs and being in bars. I know what it's a wrong way to be going. So for kids that I can help out in the future with fighters and training them and things, yeah. And help and obviously I'll be learning loads of a Tony who's doing the corner work, training inside of things. There's a lot for me to learn against him there. Have you already made any steps to sort of uh, get that ball rolling regarding? Yeah, we have, yeah. yeah. Regarding it all, yeah, we definitely have, yeah. So, um, basically I've been sent off my sent off my licence, I'll be going get my licence, I'll be coaching the corners. And I've been been with Tony down in when I have my breaks off, I've been down there training the fighters, so that, that sort of things is he totally thinks I'm, I'm good at what I do, so yeah, it's good. Is punditry commentating something that you've thought about? Yeah, that's uh, something I could, always, I could always do a bit here and there, 100%. I'd always um, like to, definitely. I've been saying, I think I'd be good at it as well. I think I'd be saying I could, um, yeah, I'd have to learn a lot about doing that, but it's something I think I'd be good at. Yeah, I mean, it seems a sort of a natural progression of sort of fighters, you get fighters like obviously. Ryan Rose and Jamie Morrison have yeah. retired to become, gone on to become 
uh, good, very good trainers yeah, as and well. Smigger, Smithy, yeah, Bob. and Smithy, yeah, great. I love him. I love his work. Yeah, but they've gone on to, um, and I said some fight, some fighters have gone on to sort of, you know, be part of commentating teams, punditry. It's sank. Like I said, you could do as well as. Yeah, well. been a coach, yeah, saying as well as I could do as being a coach, yeah. But obviously I'd have to see who would give me the work and that sort of thing, yeah. But I'd be up for doing that definitely in the future if it ever come up, but yeah. Mm. So, yeah, good. Um, I mean, just obviously, finally, obviously, you've been with Matchroom for the last sort of couple of years and... Yeah. Um, like I said, it's a new ch it was a new chapter in your life to sort of link up with Eddie Hearn and Matchroom, yeah. but, you know, what, what sort of credit, credit do you give to, to Matchroom and Eddie Hearn for... What they've done for you for the last couple of years? Basically, made my life. They've, re they've rebooted my life. Basically, they've, they've given me a future. They've done everything for me. Really, in the last two years, it's just been a pleasure working with Eddie. As he's, he's my mate, he's your mate. You know what Eddie's like. He's a good man. He, he, he flies up and down the country all week to see what, how the fighters are getting on. I remember seeing him for the first time on TV and seeing how passionate he was. I mean, my dad was watching him and my sisters as in Raynham. And that's look how passionate he's about his fighters. And he is like it's unbelievable. Like, he actually. Phil Swiss fighters and he's a good bloke. He, to be fair, my, his passion, I suppose, and, and the way he does things with his fighters, it give me help, help me to get back here, it'll give me a lift to want to get that world title fight and get that shot. And he delivered, delivers every time. I think he, even after getting that loss, straight away he could have put me into a European title fight, he delivered there again. But he, he's great at what he does, he's good, and I think he's the future. I don't think I know, he's the future. Any young kids growing up, I think, wants want to be involved in boxing, would be 100% mad if they don't go very young. Someone else who's been very, very supportive of your career has been uh, Bill Ives from Raymond Steele, yeah, uh, who's played a big, big role in your career, hasn't he? Massively. I'd, let me tell you, after the John Murray fight, if it weren't for Bill, well, before the John Murray fight, if it weren't for Bill, I probably wouldn't have ever boxed again. Never, I probably wouldn't have got a pair of gloves on, was getting involved in trouble. Financially, I was fucking flat, totally flat. He got back me on my feet. Yeah, he had good chats with me. He took me away to Montana with him. He, Bill's, he's like, he's, 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 I'm close to Bill. Do you know what I mean? Bill's, he proper looks after me. He looks after me in a way you couldn't, no, nobody could look after me. So he's been good to me. Is there any fighter that you didn't fight in your career that you wanted to fight in your career? A few, a few fights I'd like to have had. I'd like to have fought Quello in my day. I'd have liked to have fought Derry in my day. All fights like that. They're just fights. There's a lot of domestic ones ahead of, you know, I know you're yeah. obviously the, the at world level as well, but there was a lot of, well, saying that Quello is a world champion, yeah, but yeah. Uh, there was a lot of fights within the UK that yeah, could, you could have been made fights, a few mate. that, yeah, that great did, fights. They're not going to happen now. But you, you look but, like me and John Murray fight. That was for no title. That, that could have easily been for a world title. That fight there, he's ranked number one in the world. He's unbeaten in 30. Like, that, that fight that night was unbelievable. Um, there's loads of fights out there. And then the lightweight division in, in England, it's, it's, it's boiling. It's, 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 it's a great division. But it's one of them things, you know, fights, some fights were made. You think, I thought Cole Jenison, he, just, he destroyed the whole superweight division. I went there for him, busted both my hands, busted my jaw. Ended up, luckily, that night, that I, I got the win. But... Them sort of fights, hard fights. Last question. Yep. Ideally, in two years' time, yep. where would you like to see yourself? Two years' time. What would you like to have around you? What would you like to be doing in two years' time? Las Vegas. Me and my missus partying, going mad. No, um, in two years' time, I'd like to say I'll be in the gym with Tony, training fires. Your own fires. Yeah, my own fires and fires with Tony. I'm um, enjoying myself. Kids happy. There's another thing I've got to say about my kids. My oldest and my youngest have just started boxing. But yeah, like living life financially stable still. And just living a happy life, you know, helping, helping fighters out and helping people out and securing pe people's futures. Yeah. But my kids just started. Connor. He's named himself the Hammer. The next generation of Mitchells. Yeah, he's Southpaw. I'm a left handed orthodox. He's a right handed Southpaw. Heavy handed. Fights for Joe's and I'm part of the same as I did. He's got Charlie Magri making his shorts. Like, he made my first pair of shorts. And he asked me, Dad, can I, can I call myself the Hammer? I said, you call yourself what you want, boy. But um, yeah, that's the, next, that's the next step. All right, well, listen. Um, Kevin Mitchell, thanks for talking to Arthur TV. Um, we may even give you a job somewhere. 
hundred percent, because I think I'd be great at this. You'd be great at interviewing people. You'd be better than me anyway. <laughs> but um, this is like I said, it's, a, it's it is shocking news. But you have to do what's right for yeah, you. And them, yeah. if you don't feel it's in you, oh. and then you, like I said, so there's a new the, chapter in my life now. New yes, chapter in life, but you're the best person to to know whether yeah. that's in you when you wake yeah. up every morning. And if it ain't in you, then obviously, you know, you know that better than anyone else. Yeah. Regardless of whatever, so cheers, guys. Best of luck. Cheers, guys. Um, like I said, with uh, your new training career when it yep. starts, yep. and uh, like I said, I'm sure we'll catch up with you many, many times. 100%. You're going that quick. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's